If you are interested in learning the negative effects of training dogs using treats or food and learn how to train your dog using play and praise as a reward system, make sure to visit sorrowdogtraining.com. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, it's time to talk about dogs. Welcome to the show. Hope you're doing well. Hope your dogs are doing well. And if they're not behaving properly, don't worry. I'm here to help you and give you some suggestions, some tips to help you to change the behavior of your dog or fade it out. That bad behavior or unwanted behavior that you are experiencing with your dog, at least for time being until we take care of everything and if you're new here my name is Saro I'm a dog trainer also coach dog owners and in this channel we talk about dogs how to train dogs how to train dogs without the use of treats aversive tools force or domination and we focus on training dogs using reward based of play and praise which is a little bit different than um I would say the typical normal dog training method and I can see that John is here John Cipolla is here saying hi to everybody thank you for being here is this a premiere is that it's it's a live session we are live I'm live right here and we're going to talk about um, dog training and how to simplify dog training so uh, meanwhile if you have any questions regarding dogs and dog behavior and training all things to do with dogs just type it in in the chat area and i'll answer them uh, soon uh, so let's talk about dogs uh, let's talk about um how simple or how hard it is to train dogs or how 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 it is how is it that you're experiencing you know training your dog so tell me how you feel about training let me know how you feel about your dog training experience your dog training journey is it simple is it confusing is it complicated let's sim simplify it okay so the first thing that I think uh, would be interesting to learn is that dog training should be simple, should be simple. I mean, I myself, when I started my journey in with dogs and my own journey to train my own dogs, it seemed overwhelmed, it, overwhelming. It seemed a lot. It seemed uh, difficult. It seemed challenging. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to handle my dog. I'm going to have a horrible dog. I'm going to have a horrible experience with my dog. And my first dog, I would say, you know, was Jonah that I started training him. And he was not, he was a, you know, he was a beagle, but he was not per se regular normal dog. <coughs> Excuse me. I know we all say that oh our dogs is our dog is not normal our dog is special i know we all say that but it, it was really you know one of those cases for me at least it was that he was special he was special because he was not responding to food or treats he was not food or treat motivated so therefore i thought I have a horrible dog. I have a lemon dog. It's going to be a you know headache. I'm going to have a hard time figuring out how to train this dog. What did I get myself into, right? Something like that. I experienced that way. I started feeling that way. I don't know if you feel that, that way as well. Not because your dog is not food motivated, but because your dog probably is uh, you know causing a lot of headache. Uh, giving you a lot of trouble, giving you a lot of, uh, you know, bad experiences as a dog owner. But me, not only I had a dog who, you know, as a first time dog owner, for example, I was overwhelmed with just 
having a dog, you know, uh, but also um, I had a dog who was not food motivated. So I had a I had a situation that was really stressful for me. You know, I I was one of those people that was saying I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So I decided to go and register for you know puppy training classes and register to start training my dog. And what happened was I got even more confused, embarrassed, and <laughs> it was a horrible experience. I'll tell you in a moment. It's good to see um, Gene is here. Uh, we have the Soul Monk. Uh, Soul Monk is from India. John Cipolla is here. Let me know, yeah, where you're watching this live show. And let's talk about your dog. Let's talk about dogs in general. And don't forget to give it a like as well. Hit the like button. Uh, share this video. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Uh, I'll get to the, the topics and uh, the chats in a moment. But yeah, for me, you know, as a first time dog owner who has a beagle and, you know, beagles are a handful anyways, overall, naturally. And then on top of that, he was not food motivated. So I decided to register for a puppy training course to train my beagle. And it was horrible experience also in the class because the first of all, the first class that, you know, the first uh, training course that we took, uh, I got, I got, you know, busted. I got busted by the instru instructor because the instructor said, you know, you have, you, know, you got to control your dog. Your dog is crazy. You got to do something about it. And I was saying, I, I know, but I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. And he, he's not responding to treats. I give him treats. He doesn't care. And the instructor was really pissed at me because I was my dog and, you know, my puppy was kind of distracting the class, causing <laughs> chaos in the class. And my the instructor was saying, you know what, your homework for the next few weeks is to find out what kind of food your dog is going to respond to. We got to find that, right? You're not going to work on any behavioral issues, any commands or anything like that. Just your task is to find <laughs> a treat or food that is going to get your dog to pay attention. And it was hard to find anything that would kind of uh, get my puppy to focus on. So Jonah didn't pay attention to food or treats, just wanted to, believe it or not, just wanted to play and wanted to interact with me. So we passed through that uh, first training class, horrible experience. We registered for another one, another dog trainer. And that ex the experience of the second class, second dog trainer was also bad. It wasn't as bad, but it was bad. The reason it was bad because the instructor only uh, reason was running the classes was to show off his dog what his dog was capable of doing what his dog how his dog was amazing and how horrible our dogs were right so that that was the purpose of the class for him and again i had a bad experience there with training so i said to myself you know what nobody's trying nobody's going to help me no, it seems like nobody's trying to help me with my problem that I have. I have a beagle who's handful, not many beagle owners around. You know, in Vancouver, in Canada, there's not many beagles. It's not as popular a uh, breed as is in England, in uh, States, in U America. So I wasn't getting any, you know, help from a beagle specialist. Plus, I wasn't getting any help <clears throat> about how to train my beagle who is not food motivated. So I had to do my own thing 
I had to go and study and figure out and research and find out how to do to deal with these issues that I had. So that's how I started figuring out and starting my own dog training journey that led me to become a dog trainer because the problem that, that I had, there was no solution for it. So I had to find a solution. I had to create a solution for that problem. And I started sharing the information that I had learned to how to deal with a dog who's not food motivated and is a beagle with the public. So that's how I started my dog training journey and, you know, learned how to deal with dog train dogs who are not food motivated and that brings me to the next point but before i get to the next point i would uh, like to go to the chat area and see what's going on in the chat area um john is saying i get that confused all the time between premiere and live yeah i know uh, one of the uh, one of the options of YouTube, excuse me for a minute. One of the options of YouTube is that you can either do live or premiere. I don't I don't really like premiere as well. I don't think it's going to stay too long. I think, I think they're going to remove it. I don't know that I don't see any benefit into it. It, it just causes a, yeah, another confusion to the viewers. And Soul Monk is from India, and uh, there are a lot of uh, welcome by, by the way, and thank you for being here. There are a lot of stray dogs here. Oh, I I know I I I am aware of it. My dog is aggressive towards stray dogs, and if I try to stop her, she gets aggressive towards me. How can how can I stop this behavior? This is a good question, and I'm going to spend a few minutes to answer this question, and then we're going to continue on talking about my journey and uh, my experiences with dog training and overall our experience about dog training. But this, you know, dog training, again, uh, what is happening is causing us to have these problems as well. Um, I think, you know, the soul the question from the soul monk is very general we can understand that you know there are two types of dogs there are stray dogs and there are pet dogs right and the only difference between these two i mean there's there's so much similarity between pet dogs and stray dogs but dogs all dogs have evolved from wolves right the only difference is that stray dogs, they live uh, with the notion of understanding that life on the streets is, that's how life it is, right? Whereas dogs who live with us, with humans, the pet dogs, their world is different than the dogs who live on the streets. And you know, it's it's hard to hard to say that you know certain dogs are better than the others. I did a, a talk, uh, not talk, I had I did an interview a little while ago with uh, a specialist who was studying street dogs and the value that they bring and the importance of their existence in our society the the dogs those dogs usually don't have problems with other dogs is the pet dogs who have issue with everything else <laughs> because the pet dogs are living with a different life structure right so they have a different mindset and usually comes from like the problems start from 
being protective for food. So street dogs, they are wild, wild. They will find food here and there. They are not too committed. They don't have a food source that they can kind of you know, direct their energy towards to. Whereas pet dogs, they're the human, because the human, you, the soul monk, is providing the food for the dog, you become the most valuable thing for this pet dog. And this pet dog of yours is trying to protect, protect his food source, right? So that is, I would say, the main reason why your dog is being aggressive towards other dogs. It's not because they are street dogs. It's just other dogs. It's, it's a competition and your dog wants to protect its food source from others. So basically that's where it comes from. And that's the reason your dog is protecting you. And if your dog is aggressive towards street dogs, it doesn't have to be street dogs. It, I'm sure it's reactive towards other dogs as well. Uh, in general, when that happens, is it's a sign that your dog is number one and you are number two, unfortunately. So what that means is that you have to prove to your dog that you're you're more uh, in in charge you're more in on top than your dog is uh, i don't know what, what kind of dog you have i'm guessing it's a mixed breed or certain breed it doesn't matter what breed it is but what it is is your dog has to be trained in a way that you are ahead of your dog this is something interesting everybody may may benefit from this uh, our goal in our lives with our dogs is to be ahead of our dogs but most dog owners are behind their dogs so their dogs are a few steps ahead and dog owners are trying to catch up with them and the dog keeps moving forward and forward and we never catch up to them this happens also mainly and often happens in breeds that are much higher uh, i would say much higher intelligent wise let's say Mal malamore or uh, or german shepherds or dobermans those breeds or border collies they're super intelligent and the owners of these dogs are trying always to catch up they can never surpass them because these dogs are just too, I would say, too much for normal people. Uh, a dog, intelligent dog breed like that, needs to have a dog owner who is very conscious about its intel intelligence. And it's very uh, aware that this dog is super dog and we have to do a lot of stuff with these dogs so most of those breeds they end up like working for you know police department and things like places like that because they have to do a lot of stuff to get stimulated mentally physically and if they don't get stimulated mentally and physically properly all day long every day they will cause problems and one of those problems is a dog who's being protective of the human because the dog doesn't have a way, an outlet to express his uh, feelings and emotions and release that intelligence that it has. Therefore, says, you know what, I'm going to come up with a way to relieve this um, this energy that I have inside. So one of the things that dogs like that do is they they create this game activity to protect their dog. Uh, 
they're humans. And that is why I think your dog is being reactive. So the way you want to fix this problem is you got to be way ahead of your dog. So for example, you can't expect your dog for just to sit, for, for example, to stay for 30 seconds. Your dog is capable of staying for 10 minutes and you could push your dog to get there to 10 minutes. Your dog is asking for it. Uh, you can you can not train your dog and you cannot train your dog just the basics. You got to go all the way, right? So for instance, from my experience has been that I used to do with my Beagle as well uh, with Harvey and also Jonah that because we were over training our dogs, uh, including me and dog owners like me who had um, border collies and all kinds of, we used to do agility. There were students who were doing uh, fly ball, dog owners who were doing fly ball with their dogs and all kinds of activities with their dogs because their dogs were requesting more. You know, you do obedience and the dog says, okay, I got it. What else? What else can we do? Okay, we'll do the uh, scent uh, um, sport. They do the scent sport. Okay, I'm done. What's next? All right, we'll do agility. They do agility. Okay, I got it. What else? And they do uh, fly ball and they keep going. You know, you, you're, you're always trying to catch up with the dog. <laughs> Right. So you have a dog, I believe, that needs more from you. That's the short answer. <laughs> yeah. The reason your dog is being aggressive towards other dogs or anything else is because wants more stimulation. It wants it needs more. Right. And you just have to provide more for your dog. That's the the answer. I hope. It makes sense. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope uh, you benefit from that. John says, Rue is doing well. That's great. Gene uh, is uh, saying hi from rainy Chicago. Oh, wow. Uh, it was snowing here on this, uh, on the East Co uh, West Coast uh, yesterday, and today is kind of getting sunny. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the rain, actually. And we have another. Uh, channel member Cynthia uh, from New Jersey. Thank you for being here, Cynthia, as well. So uh, because Cynthia and Jean are channel members, they get uh, to ask as many questions as they need to, they want to, and I'll be answering them right away. Um, Florida, uh, John Cipolla is from Florida as well. We got everybody from everywhere. Very good. Okay. So before I get to next question, if you have any questions, just type it in in the chat area and I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, let's get to the next point that I wanted to bring. Bring up about the dog training, the challenges of dog training. So most dog owners, uh, I get a lot of comments in my channel uh, from everybody here and there <clears throat> that they say, you know what, uh, I wish I had come across your channel a while ago, long time ago or sooner because I, I have already, you know, trained my dog with treats and it's very food motivated, my dog and it's too late. I don't think I, it's, I'm going to be able not to train it without treats anymore. And here's my answer. I want to break it down to a few types. So there are types of dogs who are not food motivated. Believe it or not, there are dogs who are not food motivated. You may have a dog who's, who seems like a food motivated dog, but there are dogs who are simply 100% not food motivated. They, they don't care about food. But the thing is, the dog owner feels and thinks, oh, 
The only way that I can train a dog is using treats. And therefore, they force the dog to be trained with treats. And the, imagine being not food motivated dog and being forced to respond to a f- uh, food or treats, right? Uh, and, and that was one of my challenges, actually, personally. When I had uh, Jonah, he was not food motivated. And I was, I was told and I was forced to use treats to train him, but he just completely shut down, ignored it. It's very disrespectful when you have a dog who's not full food motivated and you force it to respond to food. Now you're gonna say, first of all, is there a dog who's not food motivated? First of all, yes, there are dogs, there are breeds who are not food motivated. There are individual dogs that literally are not food motivated. They are born that way, right? Now imagine you go and force them to respond to treats it's a slap in the face when you do that it's a disrespect to that individual dog it's in disrespect to that dog disrespect to the breed disrespect to overall canine uh, society i would say Uh, so most dog owners they think that that's the only way you have to train a dog and most dog trainers also they will bombard you and they will tell you that that's the only way that you have to train dogs. Now, I'm not saying that there are no dogs who are not food motivated. There are dogs who are food motivated. They are, there are breed of dogs that are very foody. One of them, beagles, yes. But just because they're food motivated, do we need to use food to train them as well? That's the question that I want you to think about. The other question that I want you to think about and understand also is if your dog, let's say, is food motivated, is it healthy to force it to be more and more food motivated? Or is it better to reduce the food motivation? These are the questions that you have to ask yourself, right? It it, it doesn't imply to the dog it implies to the dog owner. If I have a dog who's not food motivated, why am I forcing this dog to respond to food? First of all, that is a human error that we're forcing our dogs to respond to food. There are dogs who are also food motivated, let's say, fully food motivated, super food motivated, right? Just like beagles, let's say. Do we need to make them be more food motivated, be more reactive to foods? One of the things that you have to understand in dog training, and I believe I mentioned it in my last video, is that dog trainers, dog professionals, (laughs) usually, including me, I would I would have said if I had, if, if this was my dog training method using treats or food, I would have told you that, yes, in the beginning, you start training the dog with the treats. And then as the dog learns, you give the treat on the fifth one or the 10th one when, you know, the dog gives you that behavior. And then eventually your goal is to fade out the treats, right? the food that you're sharing with your dog or giving as reward. So the goal in here is eventually to remove the food from being a reward, right? So why are we, that's why I'm saying, why are we starting with food in the first place? If we are supposed to have a dog who's not, who's not, uh, who's capable of listening to us and obeying us and doing whatever we ask it to do without treats eventually, then why are we starting the training with the treats in the first place? Why are we um, building the foundation 
in the wrong way, right? And dog trainers may they may say, but but that's how dogs animals learn. That's how you you know reward the dog and eventually fade it out. But we have to look first from the beginning if this dog first of all is it food motivated do we know if this dog is food motivated or are we assuming that this dog is food motivated we just assume we just think or hope or we just you know imagine that dogs that's how the, they are they learn they, they are food motivated we have to give them food so are we aware first of all from the the dog's perspective and personality or is this dog actually food motivated or is this dog food motivated yes it is let's let's first find out if the dog is food motivated or not the second answer we have to question the question that we have to answer is okay we found out okay it's not food motivated then we have to train this dog without the use of food or treat or yes this dog is very food motivated but our end goal is to not use food with this dog so since this is food motivated and we don't want it to be more foodie food motivated then let's not train it with food as simple as that that simplifies the dog training once you figure that out i think you'll have a better uh, understanding of how to take this journey into dog training once you understand that perspective and for me that aha moment happened many many years ago as soon as i figured out this concept it just changed the way i looked at dogs and dog training it just changed it and it simplified dog training for me because then i was that part of the you know there, there are steps that you have to take in order to train dogs right and one of the first steps is gotta go buy the pouch for the dog treats i have to buy treats uh, i have to buy um low value treats and also high value treats and i have to buy some sausages that doesn't have spices in it because it's gonna you know and you know damage my dog's uh um you know system so that's the first thing we are thinking about when it comes to dog training getting or buying those stuff right let let's put this away let's throw this away let's not think about this what is the next step of dog training when you figure out what you're supposed to get and basically these things that you're focusing on are are the rewards right the, the, these things treats and food high value low value treats that you're thinking of buying are basically rewards so let's put this part away so how do we reward the dog here's a simple way of looking at rewarding a dog again uh, my goal is to simplify dog training so we simplified the first step which is just throw away all that notion and understanding of that i have to buy treats and food and stuff we threw that away we know now that we don't have to rely on treats and food and all that so how do we reward our dog the secret is basically very simple and again once you understand this the way you look at your dog and the way you approach dog training it changes again i hope the light bulb moment comes up <laughs> as we're talking now the best reward for you you your dog is you you're the best reward for your dog so let me make a proof here make a uh, uh, let me prove this 
Remember the question from Soul Monk? My dog is aggressive towards stray dogs and I try to stop her, she gets aggressive towards me, right? That was the clue. There's a clue. You are the for, the source of food and uh, life for your dog. And if you're in danger, your dog is going to say, you know what, I'm going to protect you. And the reason your this dog she is aggressive towards its owner is because its owner is not doing his part, his or her part, right? So you are the best reward for your dog. And you're saying, what the hell are you talking about? Me as a reward for my, your, my dog? Yes. Think about it. When you leave the house, doesn't your dog get into panic mode? Doesn't go uh, seem like it's crazy, it's gone crazy. Whenever you're stepping out of the door, your dog says, don't go. I cannot live without you. That's what it says. Or when you come home from wherever you were, don't you notice that your dog, it just goes berserk it's so happy to see you. There's a proof that you're the best thing for your dog. You're the best reward for your dog. You being part of your dog's life is the best reward a dog can have. Again, once you understand and accept this concept, it changes the way you look at dogs, the way you love your dog, the way you approach your dog, the way you do anything with your dog. And it happened to me too. Over 20 years ago, when I realized this, when I found out, when I learned this secret, it changed my everything, my life with dogs. It gave me the, the, the energy to become a dog trainer and say, you know what, I got to spread this message to other dog owners. Other dog owners should be aware of this. Nobody is aware of this. Everybody is being told that treats and food is the reward for dogs, but it's the opposite. Dog owners are the reward for dogs. And I have to tell everybody. And that's how I started my journey in dog training, because I had to spread this message to all dog owners. And I'm still spreading this, this message. And I'm dealing with the Goliath, you know. It's a story of a David and a Goliath, you know. Goliath is dog food industry it's very big it's very powerful they have brainwashed dog owners that buy our treats which will help you to train your dog it's like dogs uh, uh, it's like doctors telling people take these pills medication to live healthy well, the opposite is true. If you eat healthy, you don't get ill. If you eat garbage, you will get ill. Therefore, you need medication and this and that. And dog, train, dog food companies have created this assumption that if you buy more treats from us, your dog is going to be trained and therefore your dog is going to behave properly. But have you realized with yourself and have you experienced this with yourself as well as the public that everybody is doing the same thing? You know, everybody is using treats to train their dogs. Everybody is going to these dog training classes and being trained with the same ideology of dog training. And yet we have dogs who are reactive and we have dogs who don't listen. 
We have dogs who don't behave properly. Why is it so? Isn't it because we are focused, uh, all these people are focused on the wrong um, point, wrong ideology? Isn't it because they're focused on treats rather than relationship rather than building a healthier relationship with their dogs so that dogs and themselves they can have a clear communication system together so they can communicate properly and say you know don't do don't do this don't do that then the dog says i'm very clear of what i'm, I'm supposed to do and i'm going to listen to you and you're my best reward and the dog owners can be empowered by understanding this simple concept that we don't need to focus on treats. Whether your dog is food motivated or not, you don't need to focus on that. You're focused on the wrong thing. You should be focused on the real thing, which is you are the best reward for your dog. And that's how you simplify dog training by understanding that, that whether my dog is food motivated or not, I don't have to care about, think about or care about food. <clears throat> Other example that I'm going to give is let's say somebody is addicted to something, right? Addiction, you know, food motivation is addiction, right? If somebody is addicted to something, do we need to provide more of that thing for that person in order for that person to feel better, to live healthier and happier after? Or do we need to remove what its addiction is and provide healthier options. Do you see where I'm going? So if your dog is food motivated, do we need to provide more food for that dog? Or do we need to come up with healthier options, better options? Think of it that way as well. So few things for you to think about this week. We have gold miner James. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you as well. Thank you for being here. Hey, if you have any questions, if you have anything that is in your mind, share it in the chat area. Let me know um, so we can talk about it. You know, my goal again in this channel is to simplify dog training. And I hope you got something out of it today. You, There are things in your brain now that are starting to take shape and take uh, act, action. And I hope the light bulb is going to come up, come up and come, you know, come on. And you're going to say, you know what? Hmm. I better start working on that. I better working on, start working on my dog and my dog relationship that I have with my dog. Is my relationship with my dog based on food or treats? Or is it based on fear or domination? Or both? Which are, again, the wrong way of approaching dog training, right? So we want to be more focused on how can I connect naturally and deeply with my dog, okay? That should be your goal. So, I don't know if you have seen the, let me share, that's the wrong one. Um, the last few videos that I have uh, shared on my YouTube channel, 
starting from here, starting from three weeks ago, I started uh, posting videos that are focused on helping you to let go of this notion that your dog is treat motivated and has to get, re get reward with treats and has to be trained with treats. So the last few videos that I have posted, I'm taking you to this journey to help you to build a, a healthier relationship with your dog. So I hope you have checked out my channel and I hope you have watched those videos. I hope you have liked and or shared those videos. If you haven't, please do. Uh, it gives you a different perspective of looking at your dog and the relationship that you have with your dog as well. And I hope you gain something out of that. And also today's talk. I want you to know that dog training is very simple. Training your dog shouldn't be a, a hassle, shouldn't be a task, it should be something that naturally happens. And the only way that you can do that is by removing distractions and things that don't allow you to focus and at the focus at the right thing and move forward but remove those distractions and simplify dog training, right? And my goal is to help you with that. And if you want to even get into deeper level of training your dog and understanding your dog, I invite you to join my program. I have a program that is, first of all, based on invitation. What that means is I have to make sure that you are the right person for this program. And also, I want to make sure that you know that I'm the right person to work with you. So I have a program that is based on invitation. And to in order to figure out if I'm the right person for you and you are the right person for me to work with, then I invite you to make uh, set up a video call that we can have a little chat together. It's on the, my website, work with me. You can click on work with me and it will take you to this page where you can book a free video call with me to see if we are ideal people to work together and go deeper in this journey of dog training. I have many, many students I've had, and I have many students, beagle owners as well, all kinds of breeds, um, specializing beagles, but every breed can be uh, trained the same way. I've had many happy students. I have working at the moment with a few of students as well, that their goal is to achieve that high level of interaction and connection with their dog. So it's a very unique program. Just quickly to tell you that this is a program that we work on training you and training your dog and coaching you without the use of treats. It's a lifetime access to a program that I have. The program never expires. You can have access to it all the time, whether you have dogs now or later or whenever you get another dog, the program still exists for you. You can still go through the, uh, the program and learn more and more. We have weekly coaching calls. I coach you on a weekly basis. Every week, you're going to see me. I'm going to be helping you, holding your hands, uh, giving you support giving you everything that you need to achieve your goals. Plus there is a video library that you can go and watch on your own term and on your own time, learn more about you, your dog, your relationship with your dog. And again, it's a fun, simple, yet effective dog training system and program that will help you to achieve the goals that you want, okay? So if you want to work with me, if it's something that it's 
interested you're interested into into working with me and you have a dog who's just challenging for you you don't know where you're supposed to go what you're supposed to do set up a free call let's talk let's figure out if i'm the right person to help you or not and before we end the show again i want you to i want to remind you that if you are whether new to my channel or you have been watching my videos and you're aware of this please provide your dogs daily five essential needs which are exercise training socialization care and affection by providing all these five things on a daily basis and in this order you are going to have a better behaving dog i hope you enjoyed today's talk today's live show you gained something out of it uh, if you have any questions leave those questions in the comments area if you could share this video with other dog owners let them know let them have the opportunity to have a light bulb just like you have hopefully you had that light bulb share this video so they can have that light bulb moment as well they can learn and benefit from this information as well and also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't so there's a button right here i think i believe there's a button right there that says subscribe subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for being part of the community part of this channel part of my uh close allies and friends and um viewers of my, uh, my channel thank you gene and cynthia for being a member of the channel as well i hope you enjoyed today's show there's no other question, so I'm till next time. Have fun with your dog.